everyone, this is Jan Peterson. We're going to be talking about building your customer list today through opt-in marketing. I have some good news and some bad news. Let's start with the bad news. There are many small to medium-sized businesses who are getting great traffic, meaning a lot of unique visitors, but, and this is a big but, they are letting thousands and thousands of potential customers wander about their site without talking to them, offering them guided direction or a reason to come back. If you have the traffic, you need to capture their attention. Sounds simple, but less than 50% of businesses know how to do this well. I like to think of a website as a funnel to help my customers get what they're looking for. It's like a grocery store that has aisles that direct you to the food you want to buy. But until you get to know your customers, you don't always know what they're looking for. Is it fresh veggies and fish, or is it microwave dinners and cupcakes? How do you find out? Well, ask them. The good news is you can have what are called opt-in forms on any of your web pages that can be set up so people could ask you questions. I talk about this in depth in my course. It's important how you create your opt-in box to get the maximum number of people to sign up and then knowing how to handle and manage their information to maximize the business relationship you create with them. Which is another way of saying how successful you will be in generating profits from your customer list. And just in case anyone is unfamiliar with an opt-in box, this is the box that can be placed on any of your web pages to collect important information from your web visitors, like an email address. People will generally give you their email address in return for something that they think is valuable, whether that is information um, or a great savings offer. I like to collect very targeted information from people who visit my website. So I want to talk potato chips to the people who want to buy potato chips and veggies to the veggie people. So I might have different opt-in forms depending upon what their interests are. Does this make sense? Now, to take it just a step further, it makes sense that I would talk steak sauces to my steak people, but I wouldn't think about talking cupcakes to my low-fat yogurt crowd. The crossover would be minimal, and I might lose customer interest that way. I think one of the biggest reasons companies fail to gather customer information or build a list is that A, they don't know how to do this effectively on their websites. B, they don't know what to do with their customer list once it, they've developed it. And C, they don't have a dedicated staff person who is knowledgeable about how to nurture the list and generate substantial profits from it. We will solve all of these questions in the course, but stay tuned to my next tutorial where we'll reveal a few basic techniques you can start implementing right away for immediate results. Thanks, and feel free to visit GetWebResultsToday.com.